So I'm curious about an IP issue. We haven't talked about this. I don't know what your view is or if you thought about it uh, much, but AI is creating a bunch of uh, copyright more than patent yeah. issues. Any thoughts on that? I mean, on on these, and and I, I know there are a number of lawsuits on the media companies are suing them for using their articles to teach their algorithm. So what what should be the status of that um, in, in your view? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's a great issue. And it's one of the reasons why I love doing intellectual property because yeah. we, you know, the, the foundations of intellectual property are 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 raised as salient real issues all the time in ways that other areas of law it's not because you know it's like you know how many times can you make a new wrench? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but um, so yeah, AI. Is, so this is so this is this is not a flash in the pan fad like NFTs were. NFTs were a fad and they've, yep. they've since fallen by the wayside. Yep. But um, but no, AI is real. And it's going to be around a long time, and 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 it, and it raises really interesting issues, both in terms of questions of infringement output questions, as well as even input questions yeah. of like, well, are for instance the products of AI patentable or copyrightable? So, mm -hmm. um, so when your AI system, uh, you know, produces a a work of art, is that a copyrightable work <laughs> is that um because it was produced by a, a ai system not you know and it's not a person per se um or even ai has now been used to, to discover a new antibiotic they fed in this is a, they fed into an ai system like all this information on antibiotics and stuff and 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 it popped out hey there's this new antibiotic that and everyone was like oh my god there's a new antibiotic and the question is like okay who's the inventor of that who's the inventor of that antibiotic? yeah so and, and these are these are really interesting and they're hard questions um, and they raise kind of really uh, uh, important issues um, and these are and these are the discussions that I love to sit in, in on with policymakers sure. and lawyers and professors. So um, so on the kind of the, on the input side question, um, I think it's really important to recognize something about AI that a lot of people kind of get caught up in is that first of all AI is not art you know art of, it's not true artificial intelligence, yep. right? You know, uh, or my joke that I have that I that I like to say is, you know, until the Terminator applies for a patent or C three PO, whichever if you want good or bad, yep. uh, you know, we don't have to worry about AI actually being an inventor. This is a tool. It's a tool. It's a new type mm -hmm. of tool. And the and the most important thing about the U.S. patent system, um, as opposed to other systems, is we've recognized that the patent system is supposed to secure the products and the tools that are created in the, each new technological or or um, or uh, or economic revolution, right? So there weren't, you know, industrial power plants and and oil drilling derricks in 1790 when we created our first patent laws, but they wrote the patent law in a very general sense, right? It protects any new manufacturer process. They have general categories because they recognize that innovation is the unpredictable. It's what comes next, and the point is. Any product of a human mind should be protectable. And mm -hmm. the tools we use in creating new products should be protectable as well. So, so I just filed comments on this with the patent office because they, they raised this question, you know, well, what should be the status of AI? And, and my comment essentially summed up as um, byproducts of AI, like that, that antibiotic, you know. So the person who actually should have the, the, the patent, the property right, is the person who hit the button, yep. they run the AI or prompted it, gave it the prompt. Okay, find me a new, because they knew to put in all the inf relevant mm -hmm. information. It's the creative mind, it's the, uh, it, the behind the AI that's using it as a tool. Um, you know, so it, yeah, it's really complicated, but so were computers in the 1950s and 60s. And, and so were oil derricks and, and automobiles in the 1890s. And yet all, you know, all in typewriters, which were incredibly complex machines in the in 19th century. And so AI is just the next comp complex tool that we've used, that we've created as, as rational beings to create incredibly new values for, to live our lives. So, um, now this is really important because the copyright office has taken the position that if, if you use AI to create something, then it's not copyrightable. Really? And that's crazy. I yeah. mean, that's just a crazy position. And that was kind of what I was saying to the patent office. Like, 
ignore the copyright office. They're they're bonkers. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. Um, you know, you you should be protecting these things and identifying who they are because a lot of people are like, well, why can't the AI get a patent? Why can't we just say this computer program named Davis? This is actually some cases about this gets the patent. Well, because it's a it's a legal right. It's so it's not just that they control the, you know, you, you, you know, you have this entity and then maybe some, cause they say like corporations have legal rights and those aren't living beings. So why can't the computer program get it? Well, but a corporation isn't just a holder of rights. It's a holder. It's also has obligations relative to those rights. So it can sue on those rights, but it can be sued as well. So until mm -hmm. Davis, the AI computer sits, can sit in the defendant's table or the plaintiff's table at a lawsuit, right? It, it it can't be the owner of the of, of the property and a, itself. And corporations are just a legal structure for people, right? Yes. There are people there. So right. when you say a corporation has rights, not really. I mean, the, the people who own the corporation have rights. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's the just people directing the corporation. Yeah, it's, it's a convenient CEO. way. It's a shortcut, but it's not a it's not a yeah, it's not an actual person. Corporations yeah. are not people, they so just they represent people. Yeah, so this is this issue. So this particular issue about whether it's protectable or not is not much in the public mind. But this is a really big debate right now. It's occurring at the copyright office, at the patent office, among lawyers and policymakers, and it really matters because if we don't secure this next technological innovate, uh, revolution with the property rights that are that are deservedly created and should be secured to the, the mm -hmm. innovators. You know, we're going to undermine and 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 kill this revolution. No, the because lawmakers are too busy regulate, wanting to regulate it and uh, and yeah. prevent prevent Terminator from coming. Exactly, they're they're too caught up in all of these sci-fi, you know, yeah. uh, fear mongering scenarios that you, and don't realize that this is no different than when humans created a pen, invented a pen, then invented a typewriter, and then invented a word processor, and then invented a computer. Each stage, the human is being, uh, I described as my, I, that was the analogy I used in my in my comment. I said, we're each stage, human, the human decision maker is being moved further and further back from the various processes that occur between the human and the ultimate output that is being produced by that, by, by through those processes. And, um, and, and yet, we're, we don't have a problem identifying that these are just all tools and the AI is the same thing. It's just a new technological tool. Um, so, but then there's the interesting question. Well, especially, and this is more in the copyright space. It'll start occurring in the patent space as well, eventually. Um, you know, so what extent then do you have infringement by AI systems? Yep. And this is a written, this is kind of a cool, th these are, so there's about, I think there's about 40 cases pending right now. Oh. Uh, yeah. Not surprised them. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Or at least, or there've been 40 total. I think some of, some of them have dismissed. And so this is a really interesting, uh, Eric too, because it also shows you how, um, just like with common law development, which is case, you know, where courts develop the law through the development of cases and decisions and the law evolves in this kind of ground up basis. You had the exact same thing happen here where the first lawsuits that were filed were filed because they said, um, and they use these the anthropomorphic terms, the ingestion, the ingestion of copyrighted material by the AI system is copyright infringement. And um, and those were very quickly dismissed because they said, well, I mean, but this is this is no different than someone reading a book on the Internet and and then using that information to produce something that's not copyright infringement per se. So, you know, you haven't made the case that this is copyright infringement that's actually mm -hmm. happening. Um, and, and so those cases kept getting kicked out. And so they were, so they, the, the copyright owners were trying to figure out, well, what's, you know, where's the problem? And the problem isn't the ingestion. The problem is the, is the output is the, is, is the, is the byproduct mm -hmm. there. Then they're producing a, either a derivative work, which is a version of the original copyrighted work, which still should be protected. So derivative work would be like a, a, a new line of comic book stories based upon an original comic book hero right so superman but then they create a whole new line of suits for, well we have a movie D deadpool and wolverine that's a derivative work from the original wolverine and the original deadpool stories but but marvel still owns the copyright and so they get the copyright in that derivative work um or it reproduces the work in its entirety and that's the new york times lawsuit um the law they say look eventually if you feed the ai system because you they did put it they did put into the ai 
the the original works. Yeah. And so eventually you can prompt it for it to reproduce the original work. Um, and and if that's happening, you have a system that's facilitating copyright infringement. Yeah. Um, and I think that and the New York Times lawsuit actually is the lawsuit that actually has the most legs in this respect. It's the one that most people sat up and said, haha. After, so after like these first five or 10 lawsuits were tried and they really were legitimately kicked, you know, kicked, rejected and dismissed yeah. by courts, they said they finally they figured out what the real problem is here because, they, you know, they and the and and where the interference with the right of the creators is occurring, because if they can create the copy through the AI system, you know, then then you've got then then you've got the interfere, then you've got the making of a copy. And that and that's what copyright is about is is about the protection of mm -hmm. so um so as a and and all of this should still reflect this development should still reflect the 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 underlying principle that creators have the right to control their 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 creative works through the copyright system and through the patent system and and, and other intellectual property system in the same way that a farmer has the right to control the the crop that they produce from their farm every single year year in year out you know and so that's our presumptive starting point and mm -hmm. our presumptive. And this is really important because the, 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 the tech community has completely flipped intellectual property on its head where they think the presumptive starting point should be fair use. Yeah. Oh, well, any new technological innovation that allows a new way of using something should be presumptively, you know, free of liability of violations of other people's rights. Um, that is not the principle of what it means to live in a free society that respects individual rights. Uh, Absolutely. Hmm? So, so if if somebody somebody trained the AI, yeah, all my stuff, mm -hmm. and then came out with a Iran AI, um, would would I have a basis for suing them? Uh well, that that is some of the lawsuits. That's so. So these are, in fact, in fact, in addition to the New York Times lawsuit, there's another really big lawsuit of all of these top uh, authors, um, very yeah. famous authors, uh, for exactly this. They're saying you basically create this ability for people to recreate derivative works from yeah. my artist, my writings, because you can say because in fact, what you described exists. Someone could actually say say to no, TV, write an essay in the format and style of your own book. And, yeah. and and you'll 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 get one that's pretty good. <laughs> so I'm preempting them, and I'm uh, I've got a, there's a company that's actually going to create a Iran book clone. Yeah, they are. Uh, they, 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 <laughs> that's awesome. I've given them the right to use my voice, my image, and access to my books and to all of my materials, and we'll see what happens. I haven't heard from them in a while, but we'll see what happens. Uh, okay. Well, I hope that I hope it, that when the clone hallucinates, yeah. it's what I'm really interested. In. How does Iran hallucinate? Yeah, I, I love all this anthrop, you know, anthropomorphication we yeah. have with these AI yeah. systems that are, which are really just dumb language models, right? They're just, you know, they they're they're, they're algorithms. I mean, they're statistical. Yeah. They're statistical algorithms. They're statistical <laughs> algorithms yep. based in purely what already exists. Yes. I mean, it's not yeah. So it can't conceptually create something entirely new. Um, this is why people are always like saying to me as a law professor, like, "Ooh, in what way is AI going to, you know, really hurt you?" And I say, "It doesn't hurt us because yeah, my you. standard law school exam is here's an entire new set of facts that I've created. Tell me the legal answer to it." And uh, so, where whereas I'm not asking them to regurgitate back to me something that already happened. So where it hurts people, right, is the philosophy professors who are telling their students, "Write me an essay on Plato's Ethics." Yep. Right. That that the of course, the AI system can do that. Although yeah. Brian Kaplan and George Mason, yeah. you know, he's written some, you know, his economics exam yeah. and and the AI does really well on his tests. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, undergraduates so. are really going to hurt, are going to have to change a lot to accommodate yeah. this. Now, I, I want to mention something else, too, about the, giving your example of, the, you know, your 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 own book AI system, yeah. which is the other way that the tech industry is always kind of has really has a mistake and it's unfortunate they have this mistake is you know that i mentioned earlier right their position is always well this is outside the bounds of ip so so their first position is always oh well we can't license this it's impossible there's no way that we can accommodate this through commercial transactions and contracts and things that have, because this changes everything <laughs> it's too yep. hard 
you know, Google did this with Google Books. Google's whole position was it's impossible for us to license all of these books. This is why we just had to literally, they literally Steal them all. explicitly <laughs> created, dis we're copying books, wholesale copyright infringement. And, on the, and their justification was we couldn't, it was impossible for us to, it was like, well, then you shouldn't have done it. Yeah. But actually, the reality was you could do it because this is why there are all of these trade associations. This is why there's an entire organization called the Authors Guild, which represents all of the authors. And this is why there's all of these licensing associations and organizations. And this is why in patents, we have these something called patent pools that serve the same function, which group together, bring together all of the disparate owners to say, okay, this this reduces transaction costs. Here's mm -hmm. your easy one two one stop go to source. In fact, they had this in copyright. It's called ASCAP and BMI for the licensing of songs and music. Um, uh, in in bars, every bar. So if you ever go to a bar and they're playing music, look, they have a little ASCAP or BMI sticker somewhere because they have to show that because that's where they're getting their license from. Those are these they th those are the organizations that pool together all the different copyright owners. Mm -hmm. That a bar, that mom and pop bar you know, could easily just take like, okay, off the shelf. This is at the top. This is what I want to do with music. Here's what I pay for it. Um, they, and you, that, that will happen eventually too, with the AI, with the, both the, I think on the ingestion side and the output side. Um, but it won't happen as long as people, as long as the, you know, chat, the, the guy, who's the guy who does chat GDP is going around going, Oh, it can't be done. And this has to be fair use. Yeah. Sam Altman. <laughs> Sam Altman, yeah. Sadly, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, Silicon Valley, I mean, as great of an entrepreneurs as they are, they, 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 they're coming from everything from a very uh, egalitarian perspective or very anti-capitalist perspective, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, By the way, you know, we don't think we, many people don't, won't remember this anymore, but it was the exact same argument with with MP3s and, 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 and file sharing. Oh Why yeah, you can do it. You have to steal it, right? Have to steal it. We can't. We can't license this. We can't do any of this so until Steve, Steve Jobs, Jobs did actually did it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then absolutely, people forget that he saved the music industry and yeah, and and you know made music sharing legal. I mean, in a way that nobody imagined at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and well, and he also did it thanks to also a very important law called the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which protect which which extended copyright protections to uh, technological t protection measures. So mm -hmm. he was able to say to uh, to Sony and, and BMI, you know, all, you know, universally, all, you can tr trust me, we will, we will protect your music so that it won't be copied and shared around the entire internet. Or so, so is there any hope for a kind of semi-rational, Copyright or, or IP protection bill out of out of Congress with regard to with regard to AI or or is is Congress so dysfunctional these days that nothing good can come out of it? Yeah, as it well as a general rule of thumb, uh, as a general rule, I'm always like nothing good can come out of Congress, right? But every once in a while they do something good. Um, it's getting and, better, it seems. Yeah, um, and you know they may not need a special AI. Like they didn't need a special AI or a special bill to accommodate the uh, copyright infringement that was occurring by Napster and Grokster and all of these peer-to-peer yeah. -peer yeah. file swapping yeah. services. Yeah. There were just a couple of court decisions that just essentially said, look, this is this is a copyright infringement. Yeah. Um, and if you want to do it, you got a license. Um, and then they did. Napster was reborn as a licensed uh, pay, uh, pay for service uh, uh, MP3 listening service after that. Yeah. So um the uh, so they may not need special legislation, and again, that's that's yeah. been the in, in 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 a general sense they shouldn't have to, right? Because that's the beauty of having a properly structured rec intellectual property system. In the same way that when we have new types of property rights come into existence in factories and things of that sort, they don't have to say, oh well, we need whole new property laws to govern what a factory is as opposed to what a farm is. No, a, a property right is the right of exclusive control. And you know, um, you know, Ayn Rand's definition: the right to acquire, use, and dispose of material yeah. values. And notice that definition covers will cover AI just as much as it covers a wrench, just as much as it covers a farm, as it should. Um, but and, once in a while, we do get legislation that is helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, would that be right? Yes, yes. Like, well, I mentioned like the DMCA, which yeah. which had to identify that that uh, that we're going to that the creation of, of digital protection measures. Um, um, you know, uh, were, you know, were uh, uh, needed their own protection. So, so you know, 
So the hacking of these of these digital protection measures was which which wasn't itself a copyright violation had to be had to be made a uh, a um, uh, a uh, uh, an act of liability um, because that's that that's that one could that's what then could protect the underlying copyrighted work. Um, so if someone comes up with some type of you know digital system for watermarking works that go through the AI system or something like that, you know, and that might need be special protection because it may not mm -hmm. be covered exactly under co copyright de definition of what counts as a copyright work as opposed to what, what doesn't. Um, they might need to do something like that. Yeah.